It was just five seasons ago that Stephen Curry became the first player ever to be awarded the unanimous MVP, and this just seemed like the perfect encapsulation of what the modern day NBA had become. It was a guard-centric league, a wing-centric league, a league that didn't care about the big man. It was focused around what could potentially come from having a guard or a wing that could create offense for you and be the focal point of your offense. If it wasn't enough proof that the center position was slowly or seemed to be dying out, based off Stephen Curry being the first unanimous MVP, we'll look at the other 10 players that finished inside the top 10 of the MVP voting. The only player that you could consider a big and that's kind of a question mark in itself, was Draymond Green. Out of 10 players to poll, only one player would you kind of consider a big. That's what you had. And then even if you look at the Defensive Player of the Year polling, 128 of a possible 130 votes went to non-centers, as opposed to in the past where we just expected that not only would a center win the Defensive Player of the Year, but there would be multiple players polling significantly from that same position. Now, we had no one in the MVP voting. We had no one in the Defensive Player of the Year voting. And that was the center position just five seasons ago. In fact, even if I went back through the entire 2010s, just to make my point, only three centers finished top five in MVP voting. The center position looked like it was dying out. You compare this to 1995, the last time we had a center win the MVP and come runner up, there was more players that finished in the top five of MVP voting in the 1995 season alone than the entire 2010s. 20 years is a long time in basketball, and those 20 years definitely weren't kind to the big man because it seemed as though the big man was being phased out, and not slowly, very, very quickly. Now, before I get further into this video, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated. I make content like this every single day, and just liking the video, it really does change out how the video goes. It would be much appreciated for me to use. That would be much appreciated. Let's fast forward to the 2020, 21 MVP race, five years from when Stephen Curry won that MVP. And you not only have two centers battling it out in the top five of MVP voting, but I think two players that I think most people would agree would be up the top of MVP voting in Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. People have for so long talked about who's the better center, Jokic, Embiid. I don't care. I think the reality is we shouldn't care about that. We should recognize that it's no longer about who's the better center. It's about who's going to win MVP. Who's the better player? Who's more of a top five player? It's gone from who's the better center, who's a top 10 player, to maybe who's a top five player. And I think if these two continue on the pace they're going, have another good playoff series, and dislodge the likes of maybe a Kawhi Leonard, it seems unfathomable. But we have to consider that possibility. If these guys continue playing at the pace they're playing, they could both be top five players by the end of this season's playoffs. And that's something that I don't think anyone could have forecasted to say about two centers just five years ago or even 10 years ago that the center position would be revived and it's being revived by two kind of unlikely customers, which is a good thing to see. But when I talk about changing the NBA, it's one thing to be in the regular season awards, to be dominating the regular season. Does this really matter if it's not translating to winning or championship level play in the playoffs? No, it doesn't. So let's look at what they did last year. And I'd say three of the four best players leading into the finals, I say leading into the finals on the remaining teams were all bigs. I don't think you can argue Jokic was the best player on the Nuggets. Murray had a fantastic couple of games against the Jazz in a really good playoffs, but for consistency and for how much he did for that team, it was Nikola Jokic. And then Miami Heat, I don't think you can even argue it was Bam Adebayo. Let's talk about the finals. Obviously, that's a different story. But leading into the finals, Bam Adebayo was the anchor of that defense, and his importance was just summed up by a couple of plays, that block on Jason Tatum, and then an entire game against the Boston Celtics. Game six, elimination game to send the Celtics home. He was the best player on the floor by a significant margin, 32, 14, and five. And for that entire series, he was the best player against the Boston Celtics. When it mattered, Bam Adebayo stepped up and he was the best player of either team in that series. And then Anthony Davis, the most controversial of the three players in question, because obviously LeBron James was the other player. When you look at leading into the finals, 
it was very close between him and LeBron. I'm not really here to argue because they play completely different roles. It's just, it, how do you even compare what they were doing for their team? It was just so completely different. But what you can't argue is Anthony Davis was at the very least the second best player in every one of those series he played leading into the finals. That's what the center position was doing last year in the playoffs. But I think more importantly, We've talked about how good those centers were, but you look at the likes of Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, who Jokic faced and was the best player in that series. You look at who Anthony Davis faced throughout a couple of series is in Damian Lillard and James Harden. He was undoubtedly better than both of those players. And then Bam Adebayo in a series featuring Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum was definitely better than the two of them, in my opinion, I think the opinion of most people. But what's so different about the big man position now, and why do I think Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid, the two players reviving the center position. Let's start with Jokic because I think he's the player making the biggest difference in terms of play style, in terms of what he can do for an offense and what that can translate when a team tries to use a center as the focal point of their offense like the Nuggets have done with Jokic. He's just shown how important it is to put the right players around a center for so long we've just talked about trying to plug and play those guys. No, Give them the right assets and they will thrive. Jokic is a one-of-a-kind player. I'm not saying there's going to be another Nikola Jokic, but that doesn't mean you can't look at someone like DeMontis Sabonis in Indiana, who's increased his touches. He's now second in the league in touches behind Nikola Jokic. And as a result, the Pacers have gone from the 19th ranked offense to the 7th ranked offense. It's not just on Sabonis, but a lot of it comes from Sabonis being more involved in the play. And it's because... It's not just about him increasing assists or the center getting the final say in the offense. It's the dribble handoff. It's the consistent screens. It's his ability to roll. It's his ability to pop like Jokic does. This opens up the floor for your guards and has led to someone like Malcolm Brogdon having a career year. Someone like Jamal Murray thriving in the bubble because of the impact Jokic had. That's what happens when your center is consistently involved in the offense and is a three-level scorer and can play make and do all of these things. Your guard play thrives as a result as well. The thing is, we've seen it in Indiana. I don't think we've even seen the Jokic effect in full. I think we're going to expect more teams to do it, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's very soon. I look at someone like Carl Anthony Towns, I would expect him to get upwards of 90 touches a game over the next couple of seasons soon because he can do similar things. Like I mentioned, Jokic is a different level player and passer, but that doesn't mean you can't have a similar kind of offense run through these big guys when they're incredibly talented because everyone wants to talk about the fantastic things Jokic does. The reality is 90% of his game is made up of screening hard, rolling to the rim, popping out for threes, making the right plays, looking over the defense, and consistently being very consistent on offense. It's about making the right plays. Every now and then he'll make plays that no one else in the league can do, but for 90% of the game, he's going to just make the right plays. And if you're a center, if you're a coach, if you're an offense, you should look at that and you should look at what Nikola Jokic and the Nuggets do and try to implement that into your game plan like the Pacers are doing and they're obviously thriving as a result. I mean, just in general, centers are having the ball in their hands more often than they ever have been or over the last five years. You look back at it five years ago, there were only four players in 2016 that had a usage rate above 25%. And all of those players were on struggling teams I guess just kind of his bailout options. They were playing the old-fashioned way, post players to Marcus Cousins, Jaleel Okafor, Brook Lopez, and Nikola Vucevic. Now comparing that to 2021, you've got Joel Embiid, Andre Drummond. That We can cut that out. We don't need Andre Drummond being above 25% in usage rate. Nikola Jokic, Nikola Vucevic, Christian Wood, Carl anthony Towns, and Chris Stapps Porzingis. Three of those seven players are above 500 as opposed to none back in 2016. And well, the Wolves are actually at 500 when Carl anthony Towns has played. Played. It just shows how bad they are without him. And that shows the impact of a center as well. What does that all mean? I think it just means that now we see big guys not only creating more offense and being more involved in the offense, but it's leading to wins. Unlike five years ago, where all of these centers with high usage rates, they would just kind of happen to be the best player on a really struggling team. And that's why they had a high usage rate. It didn't really have anything to do with them leading to good offense or good wins. Now, all of a sudden, the center's being asked to do different things, and it's really affecting the team in a positive way. Like we're seeing in Houston, 
they're not the same team if it isn't for Christian Wood doing some of the things he's doing at the center position. But that's Jokic. What about Embiid? Embiid's a completely different player to Jokic, but what I've gathered from Embiid, and what I think a lot of other teams can gather from Embiid and the 76ers' success this season is everyone wanted to talk about Ben Simmons. Give Ben Simmons the help, surround him with shooters, but we failed to talk about how Joel Embiid had terrible spacing last year and that negatively affected him. Now you give him a couple of shooters, it's still not the optimal spacing. I mean, he's playing with Ben Simmons. Well, I'm not saying that's a terrible fit, but it's like if you gave him a shoot first point guard like a Kyle Lowry or James Harden, can you imagine the havoc he'd be wreaking? It would be phenomenal. But anyways, even with that being said, you've given him a couple more shooters, a, couple, a bit more spacing, and all of a sudden he's going to work. It's just showing that Maybe it's not the best idea to build around a guard. Maybe you can still build around a traditional pick, someone who still thrives in the post. And Bede's obviously popping out and shooting the three ball now. But I think that's just a prerequisite at this point for centers. I don't really need to even mention the three ball because like pretty much every good center offensively is knocking down the three ball at a pretty decent rate and consistently. So it's nothing really new. And I don't think that's going to get any less over the next few years. I think it's important to recognize these two guys are incredibly talented players, Nikola Jokic and Joel Embiid. But that doesn't mean that you can't see what the team is doing with those guys at the focal point of their offense and see how it's really helping. Surround them with the right players. Don't focus on trying to build with a guard or trying to do things that go outside of the confines of what you can do with a really good center or a big man for that point in Sabonis, who I guess is more of a power forward, but like he still plays the same role as these other guys. It's still the same kind of thing. Maybe centers aren't going to be able to fit into an offense as seamlessly as a guard or a wing who you can just pretty much plug and play into any offense. And all of a sudden that team's going to get better because they're more of a chameleon in that sense. Maybe a center you just have to build an offense around him. Not completely, but you have to give him some of the pieces, give him some of the help, and just watch that team thrive. I think we're starting to see it, like I mentioned, Indiana, Denver, and Philadelphia. Three teams, what do they all have in common? They're all having fantastic years. Indiana have kind of been struck down by injuries recently, but they're all having fantastic years, and they're all being led by their big men, and all of these big men getting increased touches and being more involved in the offense. We saw it with Miami last year in the playoffs, Bam Adebayo, when Anthony Davis went to the center spot. How good were the Los Angeles Lakers? It's not a coincidence. I hope I made my point clear. Maybe I didn't, but you get the point. The center position is changing. The big man position is changing. And a lot of that comes down to Nikola Jokic and a bit of it down to Joel Embiid. I just wanted to give Joel Embiid some credit because he's been absolutely fantastic. And he's showing that being a traditional big man can still lead to a lot of wins and maybe a potential championship level run. Who knows for the Philadelphia 76ers? All I know is these two should both be at the top of the MVP race, which isn't what ESPN is saying, but they're some clowns. Like, we know that. Jokic not top three MVP candidate? 